Guys, 30,000 subscribers. I am blown away at the fact that 30,000 of you subscribe to this channel. I never thought this would happen from the beginning, and I can't thank you enough. I'm giving this whip away for this special occasion. Here's how you can win this whip along with the other two prizes. Step one, head over to my second YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Step number two, head over to my Nick's Whip Shop Instagram page and like the picture of this whip. That automatically enters all of you into the contest. Let's blow out these candles, by the way. was the worst targeting I have ever done in my life. <laughs> Guys, for real, I am so thankful that each and every one of you have decided to subscribe to this channel. And I just think about all of you guys and all the support you've given me. And I think about when you guys tell me how these videos impact you on a further level than just whip making. I've gotten some letters from you guys, some emails here and there. You know who you are. You know who you are. And you reached out to me and you told me that these videos have impacted you on a further level than just whip making. You guys told me that these videos got you through depression, through some anxiety, through some really tough stuff going on in your life. When it all comes down, strip everything away, whip making, nylon, it's fun. But if I can do that, if I can help you guys on that kind of a level, that's what it's all about and there isn't any little technical detail, problem, uploading a video, camera trouble, that'll get in my way to keep making videos if it helps you on that, that kind of a level. I started this, this channel in 2011 and I didn't really have big expectations for it, I didn't. I had no clue that there were this many people who were interested in whips. And I had no clue that there were this many people that would be touched by the videos and ultimately helped. I had no clue. And I'm gonna keep these videos coming. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I don't know what else to say, except for let's cut the cake, but let's not use a knife. I think you know where I'm going with it. Well, before I confirm my neighbor's suspicions that I'm completely insane, I want to point out this little whip holster that I'm going to show you guys how to make today. I've been getting some requests for it and I did some research and I made one and it was really easy and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So this is just a simple piece of leather, 12 ounce cowhide, and it goes through the belt loop like this and then it holds your whip with an everyday clothing snap. So whether you're going to a uh, Indiana Jones convention, a whip meet, you just wanna walk around with your whip at your hip, this is a great way to do it, and I'm gonna show you how to make one. But first, let's get it done. We got one good slice, let's have a bite. Let's go into the whip shop and do more productive things, shall we? All right, so we are in the whip shop and we're getting ready to put together this fairly simple little whip holster. Now the material that I'm going to be using uh, for this particular holster is cowhide. And I've actually found this nice assorted bag of leather scraps at my local Hobby Lobby. And this actually costed me about $10. Actually. $10 exactly. And this is from the Silver Creek Leather Company. Oh, Jeffersonville, Indiana, in the same state as me. I just learned something new. Um, but this is something you can get for fairly cheap. And what we're after is a piece of about 10 to 12 ounce cowhide. So you can kind of see the thickness we're looking for. Now you can also use neoprene. This is a material that I oftentimes use for my heel knot foundations. Uh, you do have the option to use this, but I don't like that it doesn't crease very well when you fold it. So for that reason, I'm gonna be using leather for this project. So we're after a piece about 12 inches long, and we want it to be consistent. And you'll notice that if you do go this route and buy a bag of scraps, some of them are a little bit, uh, a little squishy. 
the quality isn't very good on some of these. Like this one is really spongy. This one is much more dense. It's much more ideal for uh, what we're gonna be applying it for. So you can also go the belt blank route. And what a belt blank is, is it's a pre-cut strip of leather, about 10 ounces, 10 to 12 ounces. It is gonna be more expensive. A single strip about uh, a yard long by an inch to two inches wide, it's gonna set you back about $15. So this is the, uh, the route that is a lot cheaper and you have a lot of scraps here to work with for future projects. Moving along through our materials, the next thing we're gonna need is a Leathercraft rivet set. And you may have seen these multiple times on jean jackets, uh, on jeans, uh, where the belt buckle, belt loops are. You see these a lot in clothing every day. Now this kit set me back about $10. You get an assortment of different colors. And as you can see, uh, these are just leather rivets. It's all they are. It's, it's a rivet that's meant to hold two pieces of leather together. And it just looks better than a standard rivet. They consist of a long part and a short part. And what happens in the end is they get smashed together and the long end flares and it holds it in permanently. So you can see a nice assortment here that they give us. They also give us some tools uh, to use uh, to pound them together, which you will see later. Next, we're gonna need a bag here of leather snaps. These are Leathercraft rivet snaps, basically the same thing as these, except these have a button snap on them. And you'll find these oftentimes on your button for your pants. So the way that this works is they come in four parts. So this is your top piece and this is your bottom piece. So in the end, when we have this attached to our whip holster, the way this is gonna work is the button is going to snap together. And you guys are probably familiar with these snaps together. So four parts. You can get these also, this bag here, way more than I need. I think this was like a 200 count. It was $10 on eBay. You can get it on Amazon, eBay, both of these, Amazon or eBay. The tools list is very minimal. I have a hammer here, I have a razor blade for cutting the leather uh, momentarily, a pair of scissors, and one of the tools that I'm going to be using today uh, is optional, and this is called a leather beveler. And you'll notice it's basically just a little hoof with a little blade in the middle, and this is what we're going to be using to square off the harsh edge of our leather and this is optional this is for cosmetic purposes you don't have to buy one of these uh, if you choose to it's about twelve dollars from tandy leather company finally we do need a yardstick or a straight edge to make our cut into our leather so the first step is to measure out 12 inches of that leather and two inches wide by 12 inches long we're going to cut a strip out of the leather so I'm not even going to be using a holder for the razor blade. I think this leather is soft enough to where I can just cut straight through it without having a handle. This is the best piece of hide that I found out of the whole bag. So what I'm going to do is just make one cut. First, just so we can get a nice straight edge. Go through that again. At this point, we can mark two inches all the way down just marking it with my tool here instead of using a pencil and the end All right, so this is what we are after, a two inch wide strip of leather. And at this point, I'm going to come through with my ruler and just make sure that we get this 12 inches long. Now at this point, I'm just gonna clean things up a little bit, make the ends square. Just cut off the ends at a slight corner. If you're really into leather craft, you could go above and beyond and you could do some tooling and make beautiful designs 
I unfortunately do not have that skill at this time. But I'm sure a lot of you are leather workers and you'll be doing a fantastic job on this thing. Better than mine. Make sure that's... And I find the razor blade does well with just chopping off those edges, rounding them off. Do the same to the other side. Excellent. So that is what we want. At this point, I'm reaching for my leather beveler. Remember this tool? I'm going to take it and show you how it works. Along the whole edge here, all the way around on the top and the bottom, I'm going to use the tool to take off that sharp edge and round it and just make it look better. I'm going to zoom in for you really close to show you how this tool works. So you want to hold the tool 45 degrees so that the point is exactly in between the left and the right side of the little hoof. And you're just going to push it like that. And see what's happening? It's just rounding off that corner and making it look more pleasing. Get the other side. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And there we have a nice beveled strip of leather. At this point, I'm grabbing my little case that includes my leather craft rivets. And I'm going to select the bright silver color. I like that. So remember, we're going to do two of each. So for every uh, rivet, we have two pieces, one long and one short. Grab the other one there. There's a short one. Now we're going to be making two holes in this strip of leather. And let me show you one of the tools that they give us to do this. This is a leather punch that we're going to be using to punch the holes in our leather for the rivets to go through. Now if you'll notice, uh, the side has been scooped out in the machine shop. And the reason they do that is so we can remove the little plugs uh, of leather once we punch them out. If this wasn't there, it would just get clogged up. So this is our little punch tool that we're going to be lightly tapping with the hammer on this side into the leather. Now they give you this little tool, but I don't recommend using that with the punch because metal on metal, it'll dull the end of the blade here, the circular blade. So I would recommend when you do this punch, do it on a surface that is softer. So I'm just going to use this table when I punch this thing. Now the section that we're working on right now is the section that's going to go through your belt. So this is the keeper, if you will. So this is the belt that I'm going to be using mostly with my whip holster. So it's good to have it on hand so we can get a nice uh, exact fit. So I'm just going to slide the belt through. And I want it to be a little bit larger than the belt. This is a pretty wide belt to begin with and most of my other belts are thinner than this so this will kind of be the guideline. So that's where I like it to be. And then this is the part that's going to be holding the whip. So the two permanent rivets will go here and the one snap button will go here. So we want to be making two holes here in a second. So once again, I don't want it to be too tight, but I don't want it to be really loose either. So I think that feels pretty good. So I'm going to take here a little needle and just mark that so I can tell where that folds. See if that, yeah, that's very easy to see. Now I'm going to just mark two holes here with this. So we'll go one here and the other one here. You could do three if you want. I think two will be sufficient with this particular leather. 
Now some leather uh, can be, we can go ahead and remove this belt by the way, that was just a guide. Some leathers can be really, really stiff, so it may be a good idea, depending on how stiff your leather is, how thick it is, to just punch through uh, one section at a time. But I'm feeling ambitious, so I'm going to try to go ahead and punch through the whole thing at once. And uh, I changed my mind. I'm actually going to have a piece of leather underneath to just keep this tool as sharp as I can keep it, because I do not know how to sharpen this. So let's line it up to our guideline hole, or our, excuse me, uh, our guideline marking that we, we did. So basically this is all it is. We take the punch and line it up on the hole. And I'm gonna grab my hammer and just punch it. Felt it go through the first one. And I think we're just gonna stop and Take that out, there's a nice hole, and we can see the, the next hole underneath it has already been started. So I'm just going to continue on. I think it's actually almost through, to be honest. Not quite. We need to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Whoa, that was close. Here's our second hole. I know it's not the prettiest uh, punched hole that you've ever seen, but the rivet will cover it, cover it up. And we just want to make sure that it's through all the way. And we can see light through the other side. So that is all we're really worried about. So now we have not only our line that we previously marked, but we also have the previous hole as our guideline. So we want to make sure that for the second hole, I want that first hole to be lined up, and it is. And also the line is lined up, so we can go ahead and punch through our second hole. Make sure that is lined up. And it is. Grab my punch. And repeat the step we just took. As you can see, we went through both of them, no problem. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get your pin out. So if you have a pliers, that might help you twist a little bit when you pull it out. And as you can see, there's the leather that we just punched. It's easily accessible and removable. So there we have two, a uh, total of four holes punched through. At this point, we can take our two sets of permanent rivets. Remember, these are two-part rivets, a long piece and a short piece. And, uh, oh, there we go. And I'm just going to separate those out there. One set will go on the left, one set will go on the right. It's at this time we can take out the little miniature anvil, if you will. Set that down. And I'm also going to get my tool. You'll notice that both of these tools are concave, meaning that they're scooped out to reinforce and encourage the natural uh, convex shape of the button. So the button is rounded and this is scooped so that when we pound them together there aren't any uh, ugly creases or flat spots forming. So these two are kind of made for each other and they uh, conform to each other. So we have that little tool. What we're going to do here is we're going to take my two long rivets and I'm going to pop them through the back side of the strip of leather like that. Now we can flip this over and we're going to take, I'm actually going to do one at a time because these are wanting to fall out on me. We're going to take that little guy here and set it down. Take this side. This is the long piece and we're going to plop that right down on the little baby anvil. And we're going to take the top of the strip and let the hole fit through like that. You can see it popping up through the top. Now we're going to take the short piece and fit it over, and we should be able to get it to snap a little bit with just pushing on it. So I felt that go in nicely. I'm going to take that tool and set it right on top of the button. Take my hammer and just give it a few fairly firm taps. 
Now what's happening inside of the rivet, the long piece is expanding inside of the short piece and now it's holding it in place. So it started off like this, when we pounded it, it flared like that. So now these edges are holding it from coming out and hopefully it'll be permanent. I think it will be. Feels and looks solid. I like it. A little bit excessive there on my pounding. You can see it's a little ugliness, but I'm not too worried about it. So we're going to repeat that same step for the right side. Popping it in place with the thumb. Tool goes on top here. So another nice fit. Looks a little bit better. You can still see the patterns, but that looks good. And we'll double check with our belt. Does it slide through the belt nicely? Yes, it does. I'm happy with that. So you'll notice that this leather doesn't really want to bend that much with the way uh, that we've done this. Now you can take a pair of pliers uh, and another piece of leather and do one of these and then clamp it down to kind of squish it so it wants to lay down. You could run over it with your car, you really could. Um, but I'm not gonna worry about that until this thing is done. So at this point, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is installing the snap buttons. And they're gonna be going here. So this is where the belt goes, and now this is where the whip is gonna go. Now, as we took the belt and used it as a reference, you might want to grab your whip and use that as a reference. I'm pretty confident uh, with the size of the whip I'm going to be using here and familiar with it, so I'm just going to go ahead and fasten this thing on and do it. So we're only going to be punching one hole. So where do I want that hole to be? Obviously I want it to be in the middle, but I don't want it to be too far down so where the whip can't fit but I don't want it to be too far up to where we don't have a lot of meat above uh, the button. So I think the best place for it will be right here. Same procedure. I'm going to take that little strip of leather and put it underneath as a backdrop, a backstop. Everything is flush. Edges are straight, I'm happy. And now we can take once again, our punch right in the middle. Grab the hammer again. Almost through, not quite. So there we go. Once again, we have two holes punched through. At this point, we're going to take our assembly for our snap button. Remember, it has four parts, and we'll go through those again right now. So we have here laid aside our little assembly. As you can see, these two pieces make up the actual snap. These are the pieces that will snap together, and these on the ends are the two pieces that are going to be holding each one of these. Now, as long as these two pieces are separate from each other, it's interchangeable. It doesn't matter which way these, or which two pieces these go with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose, oh, I like the part that goes inside to be on the top, so we'll put this over here, and then these two will be together. So zooming out a little bit for you guys, let's grab once again our assembly. So I want this top piece here to be looking like that. This is what you will see if you look at me from the side when I have this thing on. You'll see this first, and I like that. I think it looks better than looking at that. So we'll do it this way. So there is the piece, we're gonna pop it through. That's a great fit. And now the piece that we're gonna be using with this is the snap piece. So once again, we're grabbing this little piece here, we're laying that on the table, and we're just gonna set this in there. Now we're gonna fit this just like that. And I'm reaching for the other tool that they gave us. This is a flaring tool. So what this is going to do, if you look inside here, you'll see that there's a very small ring. That's the stock of the long piece that goes through. What this piece is going to do is it's going to flare that little stock, that tube, so that it's flared out and it can't pull out. And you'll see how this works. So it goes in like that. Make sure that you are on the little piece. We are. And be delicate with this. These pieces are not requiring brute strength. They just few little taps 
almost letting the weight of the hammer do all the work, to be honest. And you can see how that little tube flared out. And look at how strong that is. Isn't that great? There are so many uses for these little snaps. Perfect. And now we can take the remaining two pieces and do the same exact thing. So long piece goes on the back, up through the back like that, got the long piece, goes through, a little bit tighter, there we go. They also give you, on the other side, they give you pieces that match each other, so we wouldn't want to use, it doesn't really matter to be perfectly honest, but if we wanted to be consistent with what we're doing, they give you a piece that, that fits into there so we don't have any unwanted pressure points. We'll just use it because they give it to us. Why not? Yeah. So turn this little guy over. It matches. Lay that in. Now we can take the snap piece. Obviously make sure you orient it the correct way. I don't know if you can put it upside down. No, that wouldn't work. But just make sure that it's like that. Push it in. Make sure we're on our little tool underneath. We are, and I'm gonna take that same flaring piece, the flaring tool, right on the top there, and a few taps. Very good. So that's flared out in the middle, holding it in place. Now let's see how it works. Zoom out. Excellent. And that, my friends, is a completed bullwhip holster. Now, remember what I was talking about, about these pieces not wanting to lay down. There's a few things that you can do to address this. What I'm going to do is use the hammer. And I'm going to take it and just... encourage it to crease a little bit more. I'll do this with I'll do this with the other side as well. Now remember guys, in hindsight, it's important to keep in mind everybody's belt is a different width. Everybody's whip is a different width. So while you're assembling this bull whip holster, have your whip that you're going to be using and your belt at hand so that you can make these measurements, you can make these fits. You might want to make several of these holsters. The measurements that I gave you are not an exact science. It's not 12 inches every time. Sometimes it could be 13 inches if you're having a really large whip in your holster. So these sizes change. But this is a really inexpensive way to make a bull whip holster, a snake whip holster. You could probably fit a stock whip in it too if you chose to. But I encourage you guys to go get some of these leather snaps. Uh, go get some leather scraps and, and put one of these things together. I have some links in the description where you can get the snap rivets as well as this little box of leather craft rivets and tools. So link in the description for those. Go check this out guys, get into it, they're easy to make. I think with the scraps I have there and the supplies I have here, I could probably make 10 or 20 of these things. And they're really easy to make, they're fun gifts uh, for your friend who's a whip enthusiast. Uh, so go make a few. They're really easy and you don't have to use this thing, but it does make it look nicer. Am I really going to put this on my main channel? Well, there's that. Oh my gosh.